The Sony E70 to 350mm f4.5 to 6.3 GOSS phew, is a telephoto zoom for its E mount mirrorless cameras with APS-C sensors, like the A6000 series. Announced in August 2019 alongside the E16 to 55mm, is Sony's second telephoto zoom designed specifically for its APS-C bodies, following the much older, shorter, and cheaper E55 to 210mm f4.5 to 6.3 OSS. Now, the new model is designed as a premium option for those who demand better quality and desire longer reach without the even higher cost or bulk of the full frame G Master options. It costs $1,000 or 830 British pounds, which makes it roughly three times more than the 55 to 210 mm, but half the price of the full frame FE 200 to 600 mm, or two and a half times cheaper than the FE 100 to 400 mm G Master. In fact, its closest rival in the Sony catalogue is its full-frame FE70-300mm to f4.5-5.6G to OSS, which costs around 1200 bucks. Here's the coverage of the lens when filming in 4K on the A6600 body, where you can see it starting at a mid-telephoto equivalent of 105mm, before then zooming into a very tight super-telephoto equivalent of 525mm. This makes it perfect for capturing sports, action and wildlife or any distant subject in a compact lens and body combination. The lens barrel of the E70 to 350mm is sealed against dust and moisture, measures 142 by 77mm with a 67mm filter thread and weighs 625 grams. So it's essentially the same length as the FE70 to 300mm which is also weather sealed, but it's 7mm narrower, about 230 grams lighter, that's quite significant, and uses slightly smaller filters. The optical design on the new lens employs 19 elements in 13 groups, has a variable f4.5 to 6.3 focal ratio, 7 aperture blades, a closest focusing distance of 110 to 150cm and includes optical stabilisation. As you know, the maximum aperture varies with the focal length. It's at f4.5 between 70 and 100 mm. It's f5 between 100 and 135 mm. Then it's f5.6 between 135 and about 200 mm. Then from 200 mm all the way to the longest focal length of 350 mm, it closes to f6.3. The FE70 to 300mm focuses closer at 90cm and has 9 aperture blades, but the E70 to 350 zooms longer and employs XD linear motors for quicker and quieter focusing. Both lenses have customizable focus hold buttons, switches to enable or disable autofocus and optical steady shot stabilization, as well as locking switches which hold the barrels retracted when they're at their shortest 70mm focal length. The FE70 to 300 mm additionally sports a focus limiter switch that's lacking on the new model. To test the optical quality of the new lens, I photographed the detailed New York skyline with the lens mounted on an A6600 body at three focal lengths: 70 mm, 135 mm, or thereabouts, and the longest focal length of 350 mm. In each case, I'll present the crops from the corner and the centre of the image at each aperture for comparison, starting with the view at 70 mm as seen here. The red rectangles indicate the areas that are crop for you to have a closer look at. Starting at the maximum aperture of f4.5 when zoomed to the shortest focal length of 70mm, the new lens delivers very respectable results straight out of the gate. Both the corner crops on the left and the centre crops on the right are packed with detail from the get-go. The ultimate sharpness peaks at around f8, but really I'd be very satisfied shooting at f4.5 judging from these results, although as always it's best to avoid the minimum apertures of f22 and even f16 ideally, as they soften the detail due to diffraction. Next for the viewer, 135mm or thereabouts, and again the areas I've cropped to marked with the red rectangles. As before, the corner crops are on the left and the centre crops on the right, and like the 70mm results, those at 135mm are also looking good from the outset, although at this focal length the maximum aperture has reduced to a fairly modest f5.6. I'd say there's minimal benefit here to stopping down in terms of sharpness, but again, closing to f16 or smaller will soften the image due to diffraction, so watch out for those. And finally, the view at the longest focal length of 350mm, where the maximum aperture has fallen to f6.3. As before, the corner crops are pitched on the left, and the centre crops on the right. Many telephoto zooms lose contrast at their longer focal lengths, but the E70-350mm is still looking respectable at 350mm, even wide open. 
It arguably improves a little, closed a tad to f8, but I'd still be happy shooting at the maximum aperture across the focal range of this lens. Once again, I'd avoid the minimum apertures, indicated by the largest f numbers, to avoid the softening effect of diffraction, but this applies to all lenses. While it's fun to grab tighter than usual views of urban and natural landscapes, longer lenses will generally be used for sports and wildlife. So here's a bunch of bursts I shot with a 70-350mm mounted on an A6600 body and mostly at the longest focal length. The combination of an XD linear motor driven by the A6600's broad phase detect AF system and real-time tracking makes it easy to lock onto a target and keep it in focus even at the longest focal lengths. Now, the f6.3 focal ratio at the long end isn't going to really challenge the system as much as more expensive, brighter and heavier lenses, but it was still nice to see how effortlessly the system operated, delivering bunches of focused images. If you can't stretch to the 200-600 or 100-400 and don't need full frame compatibility, it's a great choice for sports and wildlife. Now for a few more samples shot with a 70-350mm on an A6600. As you've seen, the lens is quite capable of delivering sharp results across the frame, across its focal range and at its maximum, albeit fairly modest, apertures. Sony's AF algorithms ensure faces and even eyes are recognised as soon as they're in range, making it easy for you to lock onto a subject, whether it's a pro athlete or just your kids in the park. And again, while the maximum aperture isn't going to win any contests in terms of brightness and shallow depth of field effects, it's still quite possible to achieve a reasonable amount of blurring in the background, especially if the subject's close and the lens is fully zoomed in. In conclusion, the E70 350mm is an attractive lens for any Sony APS-C mirrorless owner who wants reasonable reach for sports and wildlife without the cost or heft of the really big guns in the system. It may not attain the ultimate reach, sharpness or brightness of the 200-600 or 100-400, but it's less than half the price, not to mention considerably more manageable while still delivering respectable quality and focusing speed. Now if you're thinking of going full frame in the future, then the FE 70-300mm makes more sense and only costs a little bit extra. And if you don't mind the heft and possibly slower focusing, then Sigma has a number of very affordable and long zooms in its catalogue. But if portability and focusing speed are important to you and you're committed to the APS-C format, then the E70-350 mm will quickly bring distant subjects close without breaking the bank or your back. I'd recommend it. Right, that's it for this video. If you find my reviews useful, give me a like and a follow if you've not already subscribed. And if you really like what I do, you can support my work by treating me to a coffee or by treating yourself to a Camera Labs t-shirt or my in-camera book, and I have links for all of these along with price checks for the lens in the description and pinned comment below. Thanks for your support, let me know what you think of the lens in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!